page 199. Good morning and good day to everybody. 199, we're going to continue learning the Mimer. This is a, this is a much easier paragraph. So uh, I think uh, more of you will be able to follow easier. easier, easier. Okay. Vihine, again, 199, paragraph Vav. In the Maimon Yutshvat, Bossi of 1951. You have it? Wait, wait, wait. It's on page 198. It's on 198. 199. Okay. Are you? I don't hear you. What? What parsha are you starting with? And what paragraph are you starting with? The beginning? Uh, the beginning of chapter 6, Vav. Right. It begins the Hine Basium Hamimer. Correct. For us, that's on page 198. Okay, so this is an older edition than one I have. Anyway, let's go. The Hine Basium Hamimer, at the end of the discourse of my father in law that he gave out to learn for Yud Shvat 1950. Mevayir, he explains there, Asher liyoyz ki ma shikishchina betachtoinim, since we've said that the primary shchina was here on earth, below, in the ikir agilu mizahoyer beis hamikdash, where was it most manifest in the holy temple, in the beis hamikdash? In the zel watam, and so therefore that's the reason shamishkin hoyer meatzeshitim tafke. That the Mishkin was specifically made of cedar wood, Atzishitim. Like it says in the Torah, Mipnei Shakavonehu Lahafei Chashtus Dilu Mazer, because the purpose and intent is to transform the folly, the stupidity of negativity, undem koch for the nefesh abamis and the passion of the animal drive, lishdus tikdusha to the fa- to the foolishness of Kedusha. So now the question is, what does it mean here, Sholem, the concept of Shtus? Yes? Yes? What, what is it at the beginning? It says, what's Dalit Lama to I and Vav Zion? What does that stand for? De le umas ze. Umas, um, um, uh, the umaze umaze means the opposite of kedusha. Okay, and and to transform that and to transform undem koch from the nefesh abamis, and the passion of the nefesh abamis to transform that lishtus the kedusha to kind of silliness of holiness. Now, what does that mean? And here is going to explain. So he brings a Gemara. Ahana le shtusa le sabe. The Gemara says, Ixubis, that they were dancing at a wedding and and, he, and and the certain sage sage made himself silly. He made himself very silly in dancing. And the Gemara says that after 120, the other sages saw that he had his own compartment and they couldn't go in because he was so holy. So the Gemara says, Ahanale, it helped him, Shtuse the Saba, this old man, his, his foolishness, the way he behaved like a fool at the wedding was right and proper to the point that he wasn't a class of himself of, of himself. Okay? So the Rebbe uses that chazal to explain to, to support his idea that we need to take the Shtus. The the negative shtus, the negative foolishness, and transform it through what? Through shtus de kedusha, which means to do to do something that's beyond the norm. Avoid the ubitul shel ma'ila mitam v'das boas. This is called the service and the nullification to Hashem that's above and beyond logic. Okay. In other words, there is the way you serve Yoni Hashem in a logical way, Al Piseichel. That's not what we're talking about here, because Al Piseichel, you wouldn't dance around like a nut at a wedding. 
you know, you dance a little bit, you sit down, you talk, you act very normal. But if you see Let's someone... See who's, what? The less you the batchen. Yeah, okay. But a batchen, you know, a does his job. But imagine someone comes in and he, and he just dances and schleps and pulls and somersaults and he's like, it's, you know, unexpected. It's very unexpected. The unexpected... Don't do that. They won't let you dive in a carba. Right. <laughs> so the, uh, right. So the, unexpe the unexpected behavior... Which, which outwardly, uh, uh, outwardly looks very, outwardly, outwardly looks very strange and weird. It's it's It transcends logic. Someone says from the, what are you doing? You know, behave like a mensch. You know, so we say, well, I'm, in, uh, you know, it's the simcha that's driving me, and that's what this sage experienced at the wedding that he was at. And because of he meant it and he acted that way, he merited to be in a compartment of his, of his own after 120. So the Rebbe says here we see the importance and in a way the only way to, to take shtus de umaze. In other words, to take no, normal sins and transform them. You don't need this activity of craziness kind of. But in order to take really bad sins and wild sins and cuckoo ones, you gotta you gotta do you gotta take it from it from it itself. You gotta you gotta take it the way it behaved. That's the way you should behave now in a holy way, which will transform that whole that 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 very very um, the, the bad behavior that was beyond the norm. You know, they're, they're, like I told you, you know, the story with the, the doctor, my friend, the, the doctor, you know, he told his friends, if you're really not kosher, I can understand you're in the cafeteria, but to go and eat you know, shrimp and pork and you guys come from Brooklyn and you know exactly, you know, you're not kosher, but that's like asinine because you know better. Someone who doesn't know better, I understand. In other words, there is a limit, there's a normal limit to a sin, and then there is beyond the norm. So when a person behaves in a negative way beyond the norm, the way to correct it is to go beyond the norm in holiness. That's what he says. Let's continue. Everything that our holy Rebbe, the previous Rebbe, demanded of us, and so to the other leaders of the of the, the Chabad movement, they themselves conducted themselves that way. It wasn't lip service, Yoni, where they told you to do something and they themselves didn't do it. Whatever they demanded of the Hasidim, they did themselves. And it gives an example, examples from each one of the Rebbe, Regarding the mitzvah of Avas Yisrael. Listen, beautiful. But first he brings the Chazal that supports that idea. Al-Aposik. Chazal say, he, he, he instructs his words to Yaakov, to Jacob, his laws and rules to Israel. Say Chazal. What he does himself, what God does, he instructs the Jews to do, and to follow. And so too, what he commands Jews to do, he does. So the Rebbe says now, and so too, it was with the instruction that the, the Lubavitcher Rebbe's, what they demanded of those that were connected and bound to them, the shayochem aleim, and even those that just were associated with them, in a if they demanded it and suggested it that that we do it, in a kimu also came. You can surely uh, understand and know that they themselves did it in a practical way. O mashagili londo shikai muzem. And and the fact that they reveal to us at times what they did, so that it should be easier for us to do it as well. And he takes the example of loving another yid. 
שיש בזה כמה וכמה סיפורים. There are many stories מכל אחד ואחד מהנשיאים from each and every one of the Lubavitcher Rebbes. ולדוגמה, for example, מכל תושזת מורזוקין of the Alter Rebbe, שהפסיק בתפילוסוי, in middle of davening, he stopped his davening, I believe it was Yom Kippur, וההולך וקוצץ עצם, and he went and he cut wood, ובישל מורק, and he cooked the soup. והחל בעצמוי, and he gave, he, ילדס, and he himself gave the food, he fed the nursing woman the food. מפני שלא היו אנושים שם בבית, there were no other men in the house, and she was, she was a חיילה שיש בו סכנה, she was a, a, an ill person, a ילדס in halacha terms, is considered an ill person who has a dangerously ill illness at the time. And Aloha says, you're, it's pikuach nefesh, and you not only are allowed to do this, you must do this to save a life. So the al Rebbe did this. So we see here that he interrupted his davening on Yom Kippur, did what, was, what seems to be a malacha, and he, and which is not, because the halacha says you're allowed to, you must do it. And why did he do it? Because there was a Yiddish woman who would have died otherwise, because she was a Yiddish. So we see his great Avas Yisrael, that he put aside his davening on Yom Kippur for the sake of a Jewish woman. That's one story. Next story. Mikveit Kushadat Muram Tzoyi, from the Bittler Rebbe. Eich shenik nasei lav echod liyechidus, a certain person came to him to have a private audience. And he complained about issues that young married people complain about, which he means here nocturnal emission, masturbation, etc. So the, the middle Rebbe rolled up his sleeve. And he, and he told the Chassid, who just came in to ask the Rebbe for a tikkun for his grave sin. The Rebbe says, You see that my skin on my arm has shriveled up because of the great pain that I have from hearing what you said. It affected me, Begashmius, that my skin shriveled up. And he told them, I have this because of your masturbation. Your sin causes me to have such pain that on my arm my skin is shriveled up because of your sin. That's how much it affects me. Yes, yes, Hillel. What is the Reshitevos? The Kolze and all this, what, all this referring okay. to the skin being shriveled up, who may ha chatas neurim? Chatas means sins, neurim of youth. That's the classical uh, yeah. Yeah. words right. in Chazal for masturbation, wasting of semen, nocturnal emissions. Baiter. Asher moving, Asher, you're welcome. Asher moving, Haflo is the Rebbe, Miss Milas Kvet Kushab Mamsoy. The Rebbe now says, We understand how great of a tzaddik the Bittler Rebbe was, and we understand that his relationship to those that were his chassidim, yet they, they had, you know, they had this as an issue. Nevertheless, he was so connected to these people, his Hasidim, Achim and Sadah and Yonim Shalahem, to the point that when they had issues in their in these areas, which wasn't appropriate, Paul all of Halishus Abrius, it impacted the Rebbe, the Mittler Rebbe, Biyosha, that his health became weaker. He took it so personally that he pushed was suffering. To the point where his flesh on himself shriveled up. 
So this is the second story that the Rebbe brings here to show the Avas Yisrael of the Mitla Rebbe for the Chassid that walked into him. In other words, he wasn't saying it, Hey Chassid, you're causing me pain and problems and why are you doing that? He was looking to find the Tikkun to help the Chassid. But at the same time, he pointed out to him that you should know your behavior impacts me physically. The third story now of Abbas Yisrael from each and every one of the Lubavitcher Rebbes. This is of the third Rebbe, Rebbe Nachem Mendel of Lubavitch, known as the Tzemach Tzedek. Once he went before davening to give a loan, the Ish Posha, to a simple person, Shehoye Nageya, it was relevant to his parnasa. Without the loan, he wouldn't make the deal, he wouldn't have parnasa. So the Tzemach Tzedek went, contrary to, seemingly contrary to halacha, you're not allowed to do anything before you daven. And he went and he sacrificed his, his, his davening and the time that he needed to prepare for davening to go and deliver money to someone as a loan so the person could have parnasa that day. Four, story number four. Marash from the Rebbe Marash, the fourth Rebbe, Rebbe Arav, Reb Shmuel. Shepam Nosa Biyichud Mikorahot Liparis. Once he traveled specifically, Korahot is like a, a train, uh, I think, Liparis, like, you know, uh, the large train. He went to Paris. Veniv Gashom, and he met there in uh, Avrich Echod. He met there a young man, Omaloi, and he said to him in Yiddish, Junger man, Junger man means young man, Junger man, Yayin Nesech, wine that is not Mavushal, Yayin Nesech, is Metamtem. Uh, and was used for, you know, it was used by a guy, but touched by a guy, used by a guy, is metamtem, it contaminates. Hamoyach v'halev, the mind and the heart. Why are you drinking this type of wine? And he said to him, Zai Ayid, be a Jew. And a Yid doesn't drink Yayin Nesich. This young man that the Marash told us to on the train to Paris, he went home and he couldn't rest until he went and found the Rebbe Marash, I guess, in Paris. And he became Chosa Bichuva, he became a Baal Teshuva. And it and, and and he had ans- he had children and grandchildren he had that were fearing of God and and Yiddish Shemayims. It's known that by the Rebbe Marash, time was very precious. He didn't waste a minute. To the point when he said Hasidic discourses, they were very brief. And at certain times, in the Bishosh, Shminis Baboiker, already eight in the morning. He was after davening. In other words, he got his day started early and he was very prompt. No wasting of a minute. Nevertheless, he took time. He traveled from Lubavitch in Russia, in Belarus, in White Russia. He went all the way to Paris. Not, he traveled um, far. And he, and he was in Paris for quite a while. So that the young man should come back. In other words, the Rebbe is intimating here that he knew that by saying this to the, Rebbe, to, the, to the young man, it would impact him and the man would want to talk to the Rebbe Marash. So he had to hang out a few days or whatever the case in Paris until the guy came back to him and he said what he said. So the point is that was making that he gave away all this time from his nor- normal seder, his normal organized day and days 
so that he should make a bal teshuva. And he says, so that's the story with the Rebbe Marash. Now he goes to the fifth Rebbe, Rebbe Reb Sholem Be'er Hashab. The way the Rebbe Rashab was addressed during the period of the fifth of the sixth Rebbe, Rabbi Yosef Yitzchak was Admur Nishma Satan. My the Rebbe of his soul is in Gan Eden, right? That's the term that was used to address him after he passed on. So the Rebbe quotes that that title. The story with the Admur Nishba Satan, meaning the Rasha Bitchilas Nisyuse. Right at the beginning when he became a Rebbe. Ashakos Gozru Oz Gzeda Khadosha, there was a new decree um on, on Yidin. And it was necessary for him to travel to Moscow. He had to go to Moscow to try to get this decree to be annulled. And he says, So his older brother, Reb Zalman Aaron, known as Harav Reb Zalman Aaron, Harazo, his older brother told him, Hazman Time is very precious by you. And you also don't know the Russian language very well. The Rebbe says in the brackets, in the parentheses, Harazo That Azo was knowledgeable in languages. You'll have to search for connections. Like, you know, you're, you're totally foreign in Moscow. It's like, you know, and you want to go to Moscow? For Lochein, he, he suggested to his brother, Esa I will go, and you will give me instructions what to say. So I'll do your mission. But since I know the language better, and I have more contacts, he was a businessman, so yeah, I assume he had more contacts there. Let me go. He made that offer. The Rebbe Marash was not agreeable. The Rebbe Rashab. The Rashab was not agreeable. Indeed, he did go himself. And he was successful in the mission. So that's again an example of how he took away of his time, even though his brother offered to do it, and he did it himself. And so those are the five stories of the Rabbeim that the Rebbe chooses. There are many others, but he chooses these five to demonstrate the Avas Yisrael of each and every one of the Lubavitcher Rebbes. And he shows us that they did it themselves. They didn't, that because if they demand of their Hasidim, Avas Yisrael, they lived it as well. Chein Yeshnam, Kamasipurim, and now he says about his father in law the sixth Rebbe. And so there are stories, many stories, of the holy, my father-in-law, the Rebbe, regarding his participation, to do a favor, and even not to an individual, not just, not just uh, for the community. Be it a favor in spiritual matters or in physical matters. And my father-in-law put himself aside to do the favor for the Jew. The Rebbe says that he did the favor not only by sacrificing his material, physical, but also he put aside his own spiritual avoida to help another yid when he ha- did this Although the person that he was doing the favor for, not only was that person not in the category of someone who is your chaver, your friend in Torah mitzvahs, he's alluding to what it says in chapter 32 in Tanya, what the Alter Rebbe says, when the Torah says, Hoi cheach, toi cheach, your friend, 
says the Alter Rebbe, a, a friend means a friend in Torah and mitzvahs. Like I've told you many times the stories. Someone who, who's an acquaintance and you don't break bread with is not really your friend. A friend is really someone who, you know, anything that happens to you and everything that happens to you, you tell him, you discuss it, you, you know, it's very close. So the Rebbe says that this person, that my father-in-law, d- sacrificed his spirituality, his own avoda, to help him, was not Chaveirecha B'Tayro Mitzvahs. He wasn't a religious Jew. He wasn't in that category. And nevertheless, the Rebbe helped him. He didn't look at the fact that he is from, he's not from, how from he is, and all that. He was very, very far from the Rebbe in a completely different category in regard to Torah and mitzvahs. And nevertheless, that didn't make a difference. The Hine next paragraph. When we engage in the activity of subjugating the Yetzirah and transforming it to Shtustik Dusha, through this, we actually fulfill the purpose of why Hashem created us here. The purpose being, Boaz, you're there? For us to, yeah. good, for us to make a dira, a home on earth. And when we do that, Yoni, when we control ourselves, and even though the Super Bowl it's our Shabbos. It's not our Shabbos. But if it was our Shabbos, and we have such a taiva to watch it, or to program it, or to think about it, or to talk about it, and we don't, because it's Shabbos, that takes a lot of self-control. It's kafya, right? And it's hard. But you say, I, I'm going to control myself, just like controlling food and other issues. It's Shabbos. So that's it's kafya. Control yourself. Then there is this hapcha. Sapcha means that I've lost my taste for sports. That's already that's already a much harder job. It's, you know, but so the number one thing, first thing is control. The number two thing is I replace my urge with a with a holy urge. That's a very different type and a much harder activity. So we call these two things hillel iskafya. Number one, control. Subjugation, number two, is hapcha, from the word hafoch, to turn over, to transform, to convert. So those are two activities, A and B. So when we do that, we do basi ligani, we create, that Hashem says, I've come to my garden, and I'm very happy to be back in my garden, because I only smell the roses, and I don't smell the dog nonsense all around the roses. There's dog stuff around it, but I don't smell it. I only smell the roses. Why? Because you've taken the manure and used it for fertilization for the ground. So you've taken such a schmutz and negativity, the waste, and you've transformed the waste for God. Because now more roses will grow and there'll be a more a nicer smell. That's an example of taking the shtus and transforming it. Or the ideas that you had in your head 30, 40 years ago, and you didn't use them in a proper way. Or let's say you had the music wasn't proper, Moshe. All of a sudden, you're going to create Jewish music with deep, profound, godly Torah messages that come with the same passion that you had for music in the past that was negative that was negative that was no good that was leading to indulgences and, and unhealthy cravings and all that that's an example of transformation says the Rebbe that's Bossi Ligani I, Hashem says I've come to my garden where I was once and you Yidale you've made my garden smell good again the Rebbe adds now Hillel when you do that, it's even a greater accomplishment than the way the garden was before the sin. 
Before the sin, the garden was all nice. No one stepped on the flowers. After the sin, they were all stepped on and messed up. And now you come back to a, a garden, but it, you come back to a garden that although it was stepped on, it's, it's nice and beautiful. So the accomplishment now is double-fold, is much greater. For example, you have a building. You destroy the building. You knock it down for the, for the purpose of building another building in its place. For sure, the new building has to be much nicer. Otherwise, why do you knock it down? Right? So too, it's, it's necessary. Layman to say, Shaidei is kafi of his hapcha, nas is dina madrega yoyel not yoyel nailis. That through his kafia and his hapcha, what? Through this, you create the nicest type of building. You take the negative, spiritual building, you take the negative and you transform it. So what comes out is you're a much nicer, stronger person. Because here you were a person who was involved in nonsense. And people knew that, and you knew that. And all of a sudden, through changing your character and changing yourself, so now you're a much stronger person. You, you, you've gone through the, you know, the, the, the therapy. You've gone through the issues. You've worked them out. And you're not scared anymore of the issues. And you can handle them. And on the contrary, you, you can teach others as well. And the Rebbe says, as my father-in-law explains in the Maimer of Basilegani, when you subjugate and control the Sitraach, the negative forces, you reveal the preciousness of Hashem in all worlds. This refers to the energy that's equal throughout which means Sayyid of Kol Almim, the encompassing energy which we discussed in the beginning of the discourse. Although the term in the Maimer of my father-in-law is Sayyid, the Rebbe says you cannot say that it, it's limited to this light, that you draw down an energy that's transcendental. So in other words, not only do you merit to have an energy that has a, that's greater than the world, but has an association with the limitations of the world, but you actually draw down transcendence. The shame is stalic. The question is, why do we call in the Zohar this energy that Hashem gives to the world istalik? Istalik in Hebrew means removal. So the Rebbe says, gam sadikim. How do we call, how do we address in, in Chazal and in the Zohar the passing of tzadikim, nikre b'shem, it's called with the word histalkut, histalkus. Removal. Wait a minute. Right? Because they've passed on. They've been removed from this world. Histalkus denotes an experience that's transcendental. So because it's transcendental, it's not here. It's here, but observably it's not here. It's, it's so powerful and so high that from our perspective we don't relate to it. Let's continue. Because Istalkos is a very great energy. Okay, we're going to skip the next the next part. Uh, no, we're not going to skip it. We can handle it. Let's go further. <laughs> yeah, no, come on. It's, it's not so hard. Listen. No, it's good. I want it. The Hine the Rebbe says, Yoni, there are two letters of the Alter Rebbe in the fourth section that's called the Geris HaKodesh. The more, I just want to say, the more you guys get these terms, your kids and grandkids are going to see it. I'm telling you, they're gonna, it's going to add a lot to their respect to you down the road. 
you, you know, you either your father or grandfather, uh, the children will respect it. It's worth investing and memorizing these terms. When you have chance, take the safer. What does the word estalkus mean? What does it mean in Chabad terminology? What does the word, you know, get, what does Igeris HaKodesh mean? Just the, just the terms, you know, get familiar with the terms. Okay, let's go further. Well, we get, so the, the Rebbe says there are two letters in which the Alter Rebbe addresses the idea of Estalkus. The second letter in the Geras HaKodesh, he addresses it over there, I believe, he addresses it over there regarding the, the, uh, the, the potter, the ox, the, the cow of the carbon chatos. <coughs> Things, <coughs> you know, one of the uh, one of the paras you couldn't bring inside the, in the mizbeach apnim. It was only it was done outside, and the reason is because <coughs> certain sins <coughs> are so massive. <coughs> excuse me, are so massive that the, that you can't that you can't bring him inside. It's too. It's too bad. It's too terrible. You don't want to contaminate the room with the smell. Yes, Hillel. What's the Rashi Tavis on, on the line? Uh, 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 gimel, gimel Klipos Ha Timeos. Okay. Kiim Ingin Anasa Bechutz That type, what can you, what can you do with that para? It atones for sins that, that, that were, are less, are less, Bad. Pora nasis bechutz. So that's why that pora, that ox, that cow was was slaughtered, and the and the avod of the kohen was what we call bechutz outside of the the inner chamber where there was the inner mizbeach. You know there were two mizbechos. And it's to, it is to this that the Alter Rebbe compares the death of tzaddikim. Today we don't have the red heifer. Because because of our sins, we specifically had to be exiled from our land. What replaces the that issue? It is the death of tzaddikim. You hear that? The passing of tzaddikim is today's... What? It's today's bringing of a carbon... Chatos for forgiveness. Vehine being is hilu kusadi kim yesh mezay beis my merazal. We have two sayings. What of Chazal? Shkula misoshin shel tzadikim. Okay, we're going to stop here to do and continue tomorrow this idea. Okay. Oh, yeah. Zaygazun to everybody. Have a good day.